Many years ago, I was given a present of an Epson HX20, as it was in storage for several years and would not power it on. From previous experience with the HX20, I had uh, a good idea where the problem was and how to fix this. Opening the computer is very straightforward. Just flip it over and there's only six machine screws holding it together. Holding the back of the computer, I gently opened the case as I knew they had to remove the connector for the ROM interface in the Mark cassette drive. To my horror, I saw corrosion in the LCD flat flex connector. I knew I was in trouble. After removing the connection for the ROM interface, I was able to separate the top and bottom portion of the case. The bottom of the case houses the battery pack, as along with the main PCB. When examined, I can see discoloration of the batteries inside the sleeve. This indicates the batteries have leaked. After splitting the pack open and examining the cells, it was clear what happened. The batteries had leaked and the acid had begun to eat the metal walls of the cells. This is some of the worst battery corrosion I've seen in a battery pack in years. There's no option left but to build a new battery pack. I was able to order four new SC cells on eBay for a reasonable price. When they arrived, I soldered the batteries together to form a new pack. Then I soldered on the battery PCB connector and tested the pack. During this time, while I was waiting for the batteries, the main PCB and display connector were washed down with IPA to remove any acid residue. Once the battery pack was tested, I installed the battery pack in the lower case and reassembled the computer. The HX20 powered on, and it worked. It was fantastic. I recorded the date, and I also printed it out on the internal printer so I had a record of when the battery pack was re replaced. It was great to see it working, but I knew inside this would not last long as the damage had been done to the LCD flex connector and to probably the PCB. So why am I producing this video four and a half years after battery was replaced? Well, the time has come. The HX20 has died, and both the main PCB and LCD screen have given up and stopped working. So instead of fixing it off camera, I'm going to record a series of videos showing you how I get the HX20 repaired or up and running again. Along the way, I'll talk about the love for this computer and why it's such an important computer for its era. And once repaired, we'll then look at expanding this machine to see how much we can get out of it. Along the way, I'll share some tips and tricks that I have learned about the Epson HX20 from my years of using this machine.